Hello there viewers, good day to you. Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you guys are here. This uh, particular vehicle is a 2016, it's a Hyundai Elantra, the GT. I believe it's got a two liter four cylinder. And the customer states that uh, when the engine is warm, it begins to run rough and idle rough. And they would like the engine oil checked. So let's see. Last time an oil change was done, 87,115 miles. Uh, that was done by myself uh, long, long ago. I'm not sure, maybe last year or something like that. Let's see where the mileage is at right now. Let's see how long this oil change has gone. So we're 87,000 when the service was due. That means the car was probably here at 82,000. I usually do my stickers at 5,000 intervals when I use a synthetic and right now, we're at 85,378 miles on the odometer, so it's not even due yet. Let's go, uh, let's see what the deal is here. I'm gonna have to look up history on this to see how long that oil change was, because that's one of my first stickers. That's the Amelie sticker. And I don't have Amelie oil, I have Amsoil oil. So I've changed stickers since uh, the last time I serviced this, but if memory is accurate, it's been quite a long time since, uh, since i was in there so let's go drive it around we're going to bring this thing up to operating temperature because the indicator indicates cold engine temp right now see the c right there it is not warmed up so we're going to give it the spin around the block up and over the bridge and uh get it to temp and see if it does not want to idle rough when we get back so far it's it's okay there's no check engine light and no seat belt either i i'm breaking the click it or ticket rules guys there we go. Now we're nice and safe. So yeah, let's uh, let's put some throttle into this unit, get some speed going, and then uh, we'll see what we have to work with here. This should be a particularly good diagnostic video, so stay tuned. All righty, we have crested the top of the bridge. We're starting to see some temperature climb on the gauge. Let me zoom you all in there a little bit. There we go. Yeah, the gauge is coming up. So we're gonna swing back into the service stall and see how this engine's performing. We're gonna break out the scan tool, check for misfire history, because they said it's running rough. We will uh, check for any other diagnostic trouble codes, even though we do not have a warning indicator. That does not mean there's no codes. That just means that the ECM has not requested the malfunction illuminator indicator yet. So we're gonna check for codes. We may have some, we may not. Um, they're saying it's running rough, so if we do have anything going on, we may have pending misfire codes. Uh, that'll at least give us some direction on what cylinders to pay attention to. And uh, we'll use the gathered information to uh, make a determination of what's going on with this particular vehicle. We're back at the shop, pulling in. We have reached full operating temperature, I believe. Did about a two mile test drive or so. So let's uh, swing around to the service stall and figure out uh, what this little engine's doing. I'm curious, it's not running rough. Whoa, that was rough. Parking lot's rough. Yeah, it's not running rough just yet, so I'm not sure what, uh, what we're looking for just yet. It's not run over Dave. Don't want to do that. There we go. All right, let's pull her on in right about here. That looks good. Parking the auto. So she's idling now. Still no, no rough running business. Not seeing that. Time to pop it in the hood. Get down below under the bonnet here. Let's see what our little two liter is doing. Hello, Hyundai engine. All right about here. There she is, little baby GDI motor. Let's pull the cover off. Come here, cover. These decorative heat holding engine covers, those are held on with little grommets. See the pegs right there? Little ball peg, ball peg, another one, and another one there. That's what these guys are held down with. Look at all that heat and sound insulation under there. It's squishy. You go there. Yeah, she's she's running okay. Kind of humming away. Pretty smooth, actually. Let's uh, let's grab the scanner tool here and see what there's any or see if there's any code stored. Uh, where is the scanner? I walked right past it. There it is. It was not far. Okay, 
You go in there, powering on. Beep. Uncording my cord. It's super tight. Flashlight engaged. Let's find the dongle. Ah, fuse OBD. It's in there. And fuse panel. There she is. There's our plug right there. Engaging data link connector. We're connected. Let's initialize communication. There we go. Scanner. Internal battery power low. Oh no. I must have left this thing plugged in overnight or, or turned on overnight. So what are we working with here? We've got a Hyundai. It's an Elantra. So let's go on down. Hyundai, 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 H, H. Honda. Can't read. Hummer. Hyundai. There we go. Elantra GT 2 liter. Oh, automatic ID. It's going to look for me. It does the work so I don't have to. No, really, this is taking a while. Cancel. Seriously? Vehicles not support auto ID. Sure, whatever. You're wasting valuable time, snap on scanner. Okay, let's do it manually. 2016. Hyundai and it's an Elantra, that's it. Elantra, that's VIN code D. Uh, it's, is it a hatchback? Is this a hatchback? Yes, it is. Hatchback, that's VIN 5, 2 liter, doke, dual overhead cam. Looking good, okay. Engine. And we're looking for codes. Show me some codes, anything, something. It's still running smooth too. No communication, really. What's his problem? Oh, that dongle wasn't plugged in very well. All right, uh, that was all my error. Okay, there we go, now we're talking. No codes present, see that? So the ECM has no DTCs. Let's just look for some pending codes. If there's a menu for that, no, there's not. So I wanna find Let's go into functional tests. We'll see if there's a misfire count. Engine running tests. Blah, 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 engine running. This better show us something. I'll be upset if we wasted all this time for no reason. Uh, injectors, no, no, no. I see, I, I'm, I'm not seeing misfire stuff here. Okay, it's not gonna give us any misfire counts. So we're gonna go out and do this manually. Well, tell you what, since we're not recreating the uh, the rough running business. Let's just move on to the next line item here on the work order. Let's just go check the oil. That's what they wanted. Let's see what the deal is with the oil and we will continue that investigation first. Uh, I'm wondering what the deal is and why, why we need to check it. Cause it's not due for 2000 miles. So we've only got a little bit of time on it. So let us see what we can see on our dipping stick. It all doesn't look too bad. I'm going to get a white towel so we can see the color and condition of this engine oil. Oil level's pretty low. Look at that, yeah, it's super low, look. Right there is our mark, see it right there? But our full mark is all the way up here, so we're only getting oil here, so we're below the minimum. Engine oil's very, very low. What kind of oil does this take? Cap says that's a 520. All right. All righty, so I've gone into my POS system. It's point of sale. And I pulled up the last work order from this vehicle. Now the date on this repair order, let's restart the engine. We're gonna let it stay, stay idling and warm. That way we know if it's gonna, or we can maybe feel it if it's gonna start running rough. So anyway, 16 Elantra GT, same vehicle. I blacked out some non-pertinent information and I highlighted the, uh, the relevant pertinent information. Last time this oil change was done, put in five quarts of 530 fully synthesized BG oil. And I know the cap says 520 and I did put in 530. And I believe uh, we had a, uh, a kind of a complaint from the owner that it was burning oil. 
and judged uh, based on how low it is, it is in fact burning oil. So I'm, uh, I think we put in the 530 instead of the 520. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll do that in Florida. I know people are like, don't ever do that. Some people are like, it's fine. Uh, I'm in the camp in certain situations where I'm gonna make a judgment call and I said it was fine, so that's what I did. Um, maybe it won't burn with 520, but I don't see how a thinner oil would burn less oil and I don't think it's leaking. We're gonna check that too, but I'm assuming we're burning oil since it's that low. Uh, anyway, 81,114 miles was when the oil change was done. Hope you guys can see that. And it's now at 85,380 miles since last time. So it made it 4,000 4, miles and approximately one year, 922.23. And today's date is I think 9.11. 23 which would be either 9 12 13 or 14th or 15th by the time you guys see this but we are we're right at the one year mark and 4,000 miles for an oil uh, oil change service interval um that oil didn't look horribly dark or black now i'm assuming that it has not been changed since this repair order if it had been changed that would have been by somebody else that failed to install the sticker because that sticker is calling us out at 87,000. So maybe I put that sticker at 6,000 back then. Yeah, 81. If it came in at 81 and the sticker says 87, that's a 6,000 interval. I mean, I think that's fair for synthetic oil. Um, regardless, we're, we're past our time interval. And again, according to the paperwork, we're not there for mileage yet. So we're clearly burning a little bit, I think, if we're not leaking. And I don't think we're leaking because we didn't have a report of leaking. We can rack this up and take a look down below and see where the oil went. What is that? That's brake fluid. You know how I feel about finding fluids inside of vehicles. That tells you what the problem is. That's on the full mark. I wonder why we have brake fluid in there. Okay. Hello. A little bit of blow by. All right, tell you what, I'm gonna pull this thing forward. We're gonna set the rack up real quick, lift it up, look for leaks, and then we're gonna start to get to the bottom of this thing. All right, green subscribe button engagement time. That's for all you new people. That's my clever way of requesting to you to consider to subscribe to this channel. That way you will not miss out on the future content. And I will in my moment of uh, shameless self-promotion for the time being. I'll probably promote something else later on just to just to troll the trolls. Uh, but we're gonna save that for later. Anyway, we're gonna run this thing on up. Uh, take a gander at the bottom side. Shut up. Not, not you, this thing, it won't shut up. Here, watch this. <laughs> I defeated a safety device with my brain. So, we're gonna check for leaks and if we find none, which I don't think we will because I don't see anything leaking, uh, we're going to do some further internal investigations. Uh, probably going to pull spark plugs out to take a look in the cylinders, maybe a compression test if I feel that's warranted, and simultaneously uh, we can maybe even go in there with a boroscope and look inside and see if there's something that we need to see. I tell you what, right now I didn't see anything leaking. Let's get an illuminator. Astro not sponsored it's just what i use i mean there's some there's a little leak right there rear main seal perhaps very tiny leak yeah that's probably a rear main there's a little cover here rear crankshaft seal is up there uh the bottom of the pan looks good yeah i don't see a couple quarts leaking out of that so i i highly doubt that's the issue that's my oil filter. Yeah, I did the last oil change. See that Wix ProTech right there? That's one of mine. Okay, so we're not leaking out. Check the control arm bushings real fast. All right, I've seen enough. So we're not leaking out. That means the oil is being burnt. Let's let her down again. Not on the locks. Coming down. Hyundai all the way down. Hyundai coming all the way down.
and contact. The Hyundai has landed. Okay, she's still running. We're back up, engine compartment area. Let me shut down my illuminator bar. I, uh, I think we're burning oil, so let's see how, what that looks like. What I'm gonna do is pull this cap off. I saw some smoke last time. Look at that. Yeah, with the light there, now we can really see it. This thing's flinging oil up everywhere out of the combustion chamber. Not okay. Yeah, we've got a blow-by situation. Let's power this thing down. Lights off, sure. Now the car thinks we got out of it. Turn the light back on. Yeah, there's, there's blow-by here. So what blow-by is, is distractions. What you guys doing? Trying to make a Malibu run. Anyway, blow by. So what's happening here when I refer to blow by, engine oil from the crankcase is making its way into the combustion chamber. That's probably occurring, uh, it's gonna be like one of two ways. It can come in through the PCV system, and I believe that's the PCV valve right there, or it could be coming in through the oil control rings through the fire ring and through the compression ring on the pistons themselves. That would, fuel pump. That would indicate that either there's cylinder and ring wear slash damage or the PCV valve is stuck open. I think that's PCV. It could be stuck open and then it's just letting upper crankcase gases run into the, uh, the combustion chamber through the top side, through the intake manifold, and that's just siphoning off and burning the engine oil. So we need to determine uh, which uh, type of oil burn is occurring here. So I think what we're gonna do is take this PCV valve out and look at it and see what the dealio is. Okay, so we have our PCV hose here that feeds into the intake manifold. That's the actual valve up there on the valve cover. So we're gonna pull this hose off and then unbolt this unit here to remove. Is that a 21 millimeter? Sure. All right, wobbly 13 16 so that's the same as 21 millimeters. Let's pull this little guy out of here. You nasty. It's full of carbon corrosion, nasty stuff. Yeah, that's much carbon in there. I recall this thing having a dirty oil system when I did the oil change. I hear the thing flopping around though. I, I hear the valve valving. I don't know if it's clogged or not. Here, let's find out. Take a pocket screwdriver. You guys see the plunger down in there? Plunger plunges. Yeah. Let's blow some air through it. You'll uh, notice from the background noise that I fired up the compressor. So I've got the air wand right here. Let's see if this thing's gonna flow through it. Doesn't really go that way. I mean, yeah, it flows. See that? It does flow. Let's, uh, get some carb cleaner or something and try to wash this out clean it up I mean it is flowing but there is some nasty inside so we're gonna clean this and put it back on but let's see how clogged this thing really might be let's fill it up some see it's it's flowing there is flow yeah I don't think it's I don't think this is the issue here guys not really so let's blow it out some more. We're gonna put this back in. I'm gonna pull spark plugs out next. There we go. So what we'll do, since we did clean this out and we've introduced a variable to the situation, we're gonna put this back in, start it one more time, and then we're gonna check it and see if we have as much blow by coming out of the top as a, uh, as when we first started. Now, the thing about some of these four bangers uh, across the manufacturers is when you pull those caps off of there, you will see like oil and stuff flying out. See how I got some on the wipers over here? Don't worry about it, keyboard Karens.
I can wash it off later, it's fine. That's just inherent in the nature of the system because a lot of times you'll see a cam lobe in there and it'll, as it rotates, it's gonna fling that oil up and out. And also due to the PCV systems, you are positively pressurizing some of these valve covers, in which case that will carry some of that misted oil up and out through the hole. So if you have a four cylinder, six cylinder, even eight cylinder, doesn't matter. If you have your engine and you take that cap off and you do see some oil flying out of there, uh, that's gonna be okay. What I'm talking about with the blow by is that smoke that's coming out of there. We don't wanna see the smoke because that's engine oil burning off, which is a bad thing, clickage. Okay, so that guy's tight. We shall now reconnect that hose, put that guy back. And what is that? That thing's way down there. There, I'll put that back on. So since we did something that could affect a change in the operation, let's just start it and recheck it just to make sure. Okay. And our blow by level is, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, see it? See right there by the light? Okay, so the PCV is not the issue. That's not the cause of the blow by. Got it. All right, we're shut down. Now we're gonna get a little bit more invasive here. Let's pull out some uh, ignition coils and some spark plugs and take a look into the cylinders. Let's take a look at the condition of the plugs. And like I said, we're gonna bore a scope in there to see if there's a bunch of cylinder wall damage or things of that nature. So due to the fact that we have accumulated sand, dust, and dirt particles here, we're gonna blow that away with the air nozzle just to keep it nice and shiny like. Goodbye, dirt. So four coils. Each coil has one bolt holding it down to the engine. We're gonna pull all the bolts out, pull all the coils out, and then pull all the spark plugs out. Ooh, can I reach that one? Nope, there's a, there's a fuel line in the way. All right, fine, we're just gonna do three of them. There, hey. Come here, coil. Flop that over to the side. Pull this one. And this one. Okay, that's three. We'll just leave these guys right here. Now we can get to the plugs down in the holes. Let me get an extension to work that bolt out and we'll pull this coil out as well. So here, let's do this. This one wants to fight with me. Remove high pressure ignition or high pressure fuel pump in order to remove spark plug. You spin it round, round. No, seriously, that's not a joke. I think I have to take the fuel line off to get this coil out. That's not gonna fly with me. Pry bar. No way, Hyundai, you did not just, uh, you did not do this. Who does this? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing here? Who does that? Why on earth would you do that? That's the worst thing possible. Let's take a maintenance item and make it unachievable to service. See, we can't really take this fuel line off because these are supposed to be one-time use only fittings. And this one, I don't want to take it off. It almost spill fuel everywhere. It didn't have to be that hard. We could have just made this like right here, but I, I got to pull the fuel, fuel line. Design fail. No matter. It comes with a built-in release tool, I think. This is the low pressure intake side. There. 
was silly. Okay, so anyway, got that apart. Now it stinks like gas in here. Ain't got no gas in it. Let's uh, let's pull all these spark plugs out and uh, see what they're looking like on the inside. Socket going down. I'll crack them all loose and then we'll spin them out with the electron ratchet to pick up some speed. Unclick there. Whoa, what was that? I don't know why that just did that. That was scary. How did I manage that? I have no idea what just happened. All right, there's one of the plugs. These are NGKs, probably original to the car. I see some wear on the end there, but nothing crazy looking. All right, let's pull the rest out. Yeah, no, really, I, I need to know why that thing just decided to randomly spew some fuel at me. Is that a coincidence or did I trigger that event? That one's very similar to the one that came out. Yeah, about the same. Okay. All righty, guys. So I have you guys set up looking at this horoscope right here with the camera. And we are going to go down into these cylinder holes and take a look at what the tops of the pistons look like. And maybe we'll be able to see the cylinder walls to give us kind of some... Uh, some indicator of what's happening inside of this engine. So right now we're in the visual stage. So we're in the spark plug hole, trying to get this thing past the threads. Right here and right here, you see guys, you guys see that? Those are the intake valves. I believe those are intakes on cylinder number one. So we can't really get a super great picture on it. Uh-oh. Oh no, what happened? It shut off. Turn it back on. There we go, powering back up. Anyway, intermission concluded. So we can't get a super good picture on those valves because the lighting from the end of the camera is sort of distorting it, but we can see that they are open. Start going a little farther in there. You see the top of the piston, a bunch of carbon all over it. It's not uh, unexpected. Yeah, a bunch of flakes of carbon all through here. This looks like the dome relief area where the injector is going to spray its spray. See how that's nice and clean? That's from the fuel slamming into the piston. Right here and here, you can see the valve reliefs. Uh, I believe those are for the uh, intake valves, the ones that we saw that are open. Or no, those would have to be the exhaust valve reliefs. Because if these are the intakes here, that means the fuel injector is right here. So there's the dome, or the dish rather, for the fuel spray, which means those reliefs there are for the exhaust valves. Anyway, I can't really get a good picture on the cylinder wall. I'm looking for scratches and gouges. Um, if we look, I don't know if you guys can see that. I sort of see what could be a scratch right around this area, but I can't really get a good enough view on it to determine that. Let's go over to cylinder number two. So we're gonna back it out, move it on over. Number two, down in the hole. past the spark plug threads. Here we go, we're in. Okay, we're looking at something similar. See a lot of carbon on top of that piston. And I can't get a real good view of the cylinder walls. But that's about the same as number one. We're going into the hole number three now. This is where it gets good. 
Yeah, a bunch more carbon up there. Bunch of nasty. Rotate it around. Yeah, I'm seeing carbon flaking off where it was on the top of the, the piston. The outside edge looks pretty, pretty built up. You see that? The edge right there, all this, that's the edge of the piston. The black area here, that is the cylinder wall, but we see a lot of buildup on the top of that piston. Number three looks pretty nasty. And number four, Number four is very similar. A lot of build up around the edge. Uh, I think this engine is suffering a blow by situation due to a, uh, a worn out set of piston rings or uh, perhaps it's just clogged up rings and there's a bunch of carbon and whatnot uh, or sludge or whatever built up into uh, the oil control ring. Let's, um, Let's switch gears one more time and do a compression test just so we know what uh, what the dealio is. And then uh, I guess we'll go from there. All righty, compression tester time. So got the compression test door, got the lead that threads into the spark plug hole. What we're gonna do is connect this to each cylinder, turn the engine over and get a compression reading. We need an adapter. Get a compression reading out of each one of these individual cylinders. Hey, right, Mr. Justin. Can I borrow you real quick? I need you to crank this engine, please. If you would be so kind. Got the adapter here. That's the 12 mil thread adapter. So we screw this into our adapter. Like so. That down in the hole. Justin, I'm gonna need three seconds of cranking. The engine will not start. Okay, connect that. But before we do that, let's plug the fuel line back in. There we go. All right, go ahead and crank it. Three seconds. 90, all right. Stay right there. I'm gonna switch to the other one. We're gonna do them all real quick like. So we had 90 on number one. Hit it. Came up to 90. Number two, I think these are gonna be fine. Check number three, uh-oh. My adapter stayed in the cylinder. I hate it when they do that. There, got it back. There we go. All right, again, crank it. That was weird, 90. Uh, do that one more time. Why is, oh, it's probably leaking from my adapter. Hang on. It's a weird sound. All right, crank it again. There we go. 90, all right. I'm not convinced we have a low compression issue here. Let's check number four for the sake of being thorough. All right, crank it one more time. And 90 again. All right, you're good, man. You can turn the key off. Let's get this thing out of here. We're done with this piece of testing equipment. Okay, so next we're gonna go back and take a look at some of these spark plugs. Now, this isn't horribly bad, but do you guys see all that build up nasty stuff on the side of this thing. Yeah, take a look right here. If, and now you can see a little better. Yeah, watch this. See all that build up right there? We've seen worse. That's not horribly bad, but what that build up is, stay focused. What that build up right there is, see all that? That is the byproduct of engine oil burning in the combustion chamber. So what I think is happening here, there's a good amount of it right there. What I think we're doing is that oil is getting past the oil control rings in the cylinder and that is causing the excessive blow by. So it's getting past the bottom ring, getting past the fire ring and then getting past the compression ring. Oil is ending up in the combustion chamber and it's just burning from there. That's, that's what I think is going on. So how do we fix that? Um, there's a couple ways we can go about it. We can try 
Well, it actually is going to depend on what the problem is. If if those oil rings and compression and fire rings are damaged because of infrequent oil change intervals, then the only repair is going to be to pull the cylinders out and re-ring the engine. Because that means that the rings are all scuffed up and that's why they're not providing any kind of a seal. To the, uh, to the combustion chamber. So if it's a ring wear issue, again, the only way to fix it is to replace said uh, piston rings and it might not be cost effective on this uh, particular engine. Um, if it happens to be full of varnish and carbon and sludge and nasty, then we can attempt to clean it out using a chemical treatment by a way of, uh, well, an engine flush that is specifically designed to remove buildup from uh, those types of oiled areas. But I don't know which, uh, which scenario is the one that is applicable in this situation. So we can try a chemical and an oil change and see if it stops burning. But my intuition on this one is telling me that we have an issue uh, with the physical rings themselves. Uh, I wonder if maybe doing a leak down test would give us some more answers but maybe not because it wouldn't let us know if we're losing compression or getting bypass through. However, I'm also not entirely sure, uh, and forgive me if the scene got skipped some, we ran out of battery, uh, but what I was saying is I'm not entirely sure if a leak down test is going to uh, give us the results that I think we're looking for because a leak down test is designed to measure how much a cylinder that has been brought up to compression is leaking over X amount of time. And that would also include leaks coming through the intake and or exhaust valves. So if we did just a leak down test on it, that wouldn't necessarily pinpoint the fact that the, uh, uh, that we're getting oil coming past somehow, some way. Um, if we had like a bad valve or something like that, then a leak down test would definitely let us know because we could uh, we could do a smoke test in conjunction with the leak down test, or we could just listen for the leak uh, after the cylinder's pressurized. Um, but what I'm getting at is I, I don't really believe that a leak down test is going to help me determine whether or not we have an oil control ring problem or not. Uh, I think we do, but I think it's better off that we uh, employ process of elimination here, which we've already started. We know it's not the PCV valve. We know it's not low compression. Um, I would say the only way to move forward uh, other than more invasive testing and visual inspection uh, would be to either go back in with a better boroscope to see the cylinder walls and again that will not let us see the oil rings or, uh, or we can try to run some chemical through it and, and hope that the, uh, the issue is in fact sludge and carbon and buildup in the piston rings themselves. I, I really don't know. I really don't know if that's the case, but that seems to be the most likely case because we've also learned that this vehicle does not get a lot of mileage on it and its oil changes are infrequent. And I also, again, recall and having reviewed my previous notes, uh, the oil was very far overdue on the oil change prior to the one that I had performed last year. So it's, I, I don't know that, that much history on it. If I had a history of oil changes on this, it would be a different story. I just, I just don't know. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that uh, we attempt to de-sludge this engine. Or maybe we should find proof that there is more sludge. Maybe if we find more sludge somewhere else, we can uh, take steps to remove said sludge. That, that's, that would be a good option. But what I'm getting at is I think an oil, an oil flush would be, um, would be in line at this current point in time. So I think we should perform that and then uh, and see what's gonna happen with this engine. Now, on the bright side of the situation, let's pull this fuel line back off real quick so I can put that other plug back in. that guy in there still some fuel pressure I don't want to dump this raw fuel into that hole right there then there'll just be raw fuel sitting on top of the spark plug but anyway as I was saying on the bright side here we had a very clear indicator of blow by coming out of the engine oil cap so we know what it looks like so if we do end up doing the oil flush on this after we're done and after it's driven 
a little while, we can go back and pull the cap and see if we have any improvement. With regards to the, the claim that it runs rough at idle when it's warm, I'm going to uh, hypothesize, since we didn't witness that occurring just yet, I'm thinking that either that PCV could par uh, be partially clogged or unclogged, or partially clogged rather, and it's just dumping in crankcase air back into the intake because there's supposed to be like an orifice restriction in there and if it's stuck open it might just be wide open throttle all the time you see that thing spring loaded in there so it's possible it got stuck wide open throttle and that was causing the misfire or the rough running condition and it's also possible that this thing is equipped with variable valve timing and i think it is somewhere there should be some bvt stuff on it yeah i see a solenoid back here and the old the low oil level is just foaming up and then VVT function can't operate as designed. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is dump a can of cleaner in this and we're gonna run it for about 20, 30 minutes, get it super duper hot, and maybe we can decarbon slash desludge this particular engine. So we're gonna go with that. Now I had used this previous product on another vehicle that we knew for certain had sticking piston rings. And after providing or performing like an hour long engine oil flush with the BG EPR chemical, it uh it did in fact free up those piston rings and the engine ran infinitely better than when it had started now we had done some other stuff to it but we were focusing on chemically cleaning the valves and uh well not the valves the rings and the ring lands and like i said it saw we did see a result now this is not mechanic in a can it does not fix things but this is a tool in my arsenal that i use to assist me to weed things out draw conclusions and potentially improve overall performance of things it, it doesn't fix things but it helps me fix things does that make sense and that's why i use such items they're, they're not miracle devices they don't just magically fix everything but uh, they have proven themselves over and over again in certain types of applications. So what I'm going to do, since this thing is low on engine oil level, we're going to throw a little bit more oil in it to bring it back up to its normal height. Then we're going to start this engine. I'm going to run it up to a high idle, like 2000 RPM, and we're going to leave it alone for about 20, 30 minutes. We're just going to let it sit there and cook and circulate and do its thing. And uh, if in fact there is a ring issue and a ring land issue on those pistons, that chemical is going to help clean that up and free them up and then hopefully restore some of this engine's lost performance. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to throw in some synthetic blend oil because I don't want to waste a good full sin oil because this is all going to get drained back out. But we are going to add, I think we're about a quart low, so I'm just going to throw about a quart into this. Bring the level up and then uh, we'll begin the flushing process. That feels about right, I think we're good. Sure, let's put that guy right there. And where's my towel? There's one. Let's pull out our dipping stick here and check the level. Right there, top of the full mark, see that? Good. So we'll put our cap back on. We're gonna go back into the cabin. We're gonna fire this thing up. We'll bring it up to super high idle and then we're gonna leave it alone for a half hour and let it cook. Beginning engine stocking sequence now. Still running smooth, oil level's full. I need to turn off the AC. You heard the compressor come on. We don't want to have varying loads, so we're going to shut off climate control. That's just no fingerprints. Ha 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 ha. So here we shut. Let's go ahead and shut that down. Good. And I need to stick a throttle stop in here to bring our engine idle up. Okie dokes. Returning to the vehicle, we have a throttle stop. It's like a caulk gun this little hook on it, that hook hooks into the steering wheel. And as we crank the handle trigger down, it extends the rod, depressing the accelerator pedal and allowing us manual throttle control over the engine. So we put this guy in here, 
squeeze that guy down there. We have contact with the accelerator pedal and we're just gonna lightly give it a couple squeezes, real light. Watching the tack, see tack coming up. A little high, let me get away. Oh, too much, we're running away. Push the button, here. I'm sitting on the seat trying to do that and that often can affect things. Let's try this again. Little squeeze. Little squeeze, little squeeze. Too much of a squeeze. Maybe, maybe the steering wheel's turning. Let me change the angle here and try this. Almost. I want to see 2,000 out of it. There we go. Perfect. Okay. It's 3.21 p.m. I'll be back in 30 minutes. We're going to leave this alone. Intermission. You guys stay right here. Don't go anywhere unless you go over to RaymanRaysRepairs.com to sample our custom K-Cup custom copies that I have provided for you in a moment of shameless self-promotion number two. But no, in all seriousness, uh, we built, a, I think, an incredible merchandising company out of the need to facilitate the request of you guys, the viewers, not for the people that don't want it, it was for the people that do. And uh, I would like to advertise said company. We've got a lot riding on the situation. I look forward to your feedback. So if you would, please visit RaymanRaysRepairs.com. That's the website to contact the shop. Uh, and to link you over to my merchandise section. Uh, peruse yourself around, take a look at what we have to offer and what we built so far. I'd like to see what you guys think about it. Come on back to this video's comment section and let me know your opinions on the matter. And if you're so interested, please feel free to build yourself a shopping cart. Use promo code free t-shirt. I believe that's gonna give you $20 off of any order you put together. And uh, that way you can have a sample of my premium, non-fading, non-bleeding, non-junk t-shirts that I have offered to uh, fill a void in the market that some of the other retailers have per perpetuated words. I almost messed that one up. Perpetuated, perpetrated upon the YouTube audience. There we go, words, we got it. So I'll see you guys in uh, 27.5 minutes after this thing's done cooking, and we'll see what the engine oil looks like when I get back. All right, it's been past the allotted time. Let's go check the clock and see how long this has been going. I feel some heat coming off of this thing. It's been chooching for a while. What time is it? 4.03, so we have exceeded, yeah, right there, 4.03. We've exceeded the allotted amount of time, which is good. More cleaning is better than less cleaning, right? So, we're shut down. Mm, okay, no smoke rolled out. I mean, it's not running, but I was curious to see if there was a bunch in there. Engine oil level. Yeah, oil looks about the same. It's not super black, it's not clear, anything like that. It looks about the same as when we had started. So let's run this thing back up. We're gonna spill and fill it and then run it again and we're gonna see if we have any blow by or if we have at least reduced blow by. There's potential for reduced blow by here. All right, we're back up, top of the rack. Let's go ahead and set her down on the locks for safety. Monday coming down. Lock, lock, engage. Let's get the oil drain pan device over yonder. I have a filter over there, the uh, 51334 part number filter. Same one that we are, will be pulling off. Let's roll this thing on over. This thing's feeling kind of full. Do we have space? Yeah, we've got space, okay. I dislike overfilling engine oil drains. Okay, we need a 17 mil and some filter pliers. Okay, filter pliers coming in. Now all this is pretty hot, so I'm not touching it. Let's get the filter loose and let it drain for a little bit. That oil is looking pretty black from this point of view. Oh, spillage splashages. So I can smell that cleaner in this oil, even the stuff that just spilled out. 
which means that that cleaner doesn't break down and lose its chemical composition, I suppose, as it's uh, doing its job. I'm speculating, I don't know that for sure. No chemist. Let us uh, get the filter. New filter right here. Now there's plenty of oil at the bottom of that filter housing, so I don't need to pre-lubricate this gasket. It's fine. Not hurting anything. You don't want to use a tool to tighten these filters because you can put a dent in it and that dent will develop into a leaking crack later on. 17, I think it's 17. Yeah, you'd be driving down the road, your filter will bust itself open and pressure spray all your engine oil out of it. That would be an unfortunate turn of events while driving. Here. Here it comes. Woo! Very opaque oil. You can't really see through it. Hot! Oh, hot! It burnt myself. The thermal dynamic insulation properties of the nitro glove is moderately ineffective. So, anyway, let's let this thing drain out. I'll be right back. See you guys in a minute when we're done drip drying. Okay, done draining. This plug is hot! That plug is still hot. Oh my. Ooh, if you didn't touch it, wait, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, I'll just be impatient and not have time for that. And it wasn't third degree burn hot. It was just a little warm, you know? Drain plug tight. Very good. So let's get some spray real quick and I'll clean this business off. Where, oh, where is my brake clean can? It's really far away. Okay, chemical cleaning solvent. Isn't it funny how the internet webs will believe that chemicals can clean things externally, but if you put them inside of the engine, they can't clean. Like, see, look, that's clean. That's clean, that's clean, filter's clean. So we see that cleaner chemicals clean on the outside, but nobody wants to accept the plausibility or possibility or even the probability that they can clean things on the inside. There must be like some kind of a, like a magnetic flux that occurs when you place parts inside of a, a big metal box that prevents chemicals and physics from applying in that situation. That, that must be it. Cause I mean, if it cleans the outside, there's no way it can clean the inside. Anyway, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna let her down again and fill this thing up. Um, so as we saw, uh, or as we talked about actually in the previous oil change, I had used a, uh, a fully synthetic engine oil. It was a 530 full sin. And the, uh, the vehicle made it 4,000 miles before showing a problem. And we are concerned of an oil control issue. So what I'm going to do with this oil change is we're not gonna use a full sin. I'm gonna keep the 530, but we're gonna use a synthetic blend. Now, no AMS oil plug needed. Uh, this is an experimental oil as far as I'm concerned because AMS oil is not known for blended synthetics. But the reason I'm gonna use a blend in this engine is if we find that that small treatment of cleaner was ineffective, we may end up escalating this into performing a, a completely different yet similar service with a higher concentrated power of cleaner solution. It's like the, uh, let's, let's say, we'll call the little can we just used, like the little, uh, the nephew of the cleaners. Well, if we are, we may end up switching out to the, uh, the granddad of the cleaners for another service. Now that service is a little bit more costly. Uh, those little cans, those cost 20 bucks. Uh, the other service cost 800. So if we see any improvement out of this with the $20 can, we may revisit this with the $800 can. Now the, or not really the $800 can, the $800 service. Now that service is gonna require that we use up and uh, 
drain out this oil that's in the engine right now. So the reason I'm using the blend is I don't want to potentially drain out the uh, really good, super premium, high quality oil and then have to replace it again. So we're going to use a cheaper oil first and then uh, if we need to, we can move this thing back into a full synthetic. Does that make sense? Good. So now that I've freed up my other hand, uh, let's engage in some pouring things action to uh, get the rest of this oil into this engine. That's a four, four quart jug. I dumped in about a quart just now, so that puts us up to uh, about five, which is the spec on this. There we go. There's a little bit left in the bottle over yonder. Let's do a preliminary check and see where our full mark is going to land here. And according to this, it's in the overfilled section right about here, but the filter is also empty. So we need to start this and then prime the filter. Then we'll give it a recheck. Okay, beginning engine starting sequence. Now. Okay, engine's running. Shut down. You may not have heard the engine start because I'm wearing my microphone. It's not over here. Just so you know. Okay. Pulling our dipstick. Ha ha. I tricked you guys into an oil change again. Ha ha. Got you. And right there, we're in the center of the hatch marks. Right in the middle. So we can top it off with another quarter quart or I can put in a can of... Uh, additive to this engine which we're not going to do so we're just going to top it off but before doing such things we're going to start it up again and let's check for some blow by one more engine starting sequence oh the light is off there we go light back on so here we go Moment of truth. Do we have reduced engine blow by or not? What do you guys think? I'm not seeing a bunch of oil or a bunch of smoke. I see a little bit. If you look right towards the, the light area, right here at the flashlight, you should be able to see some smoke. I'm not seeing the blow by that we saw earlier. So having said that, we have witnessed an improvement of the performance of this engine. We saw it right before our very eyes. That can of mechanic in a can did something. Now that being said, real quick, before we close this out, I want to talk about the, uh, the granddad for all the services. And uh, it is a BG product. It is made out of chemicals, chemicals that work in the inside, not just the outside. Uh, this is called the dynamic engine restoration. So what we had just done was installed this can of cleaner, the EPR that comes with the motor oil additive. Uh, I'm not, haven't decided whether I want to use that yet or not. We may or we may not. If we end up not performing the additional cleaning service. I, uh, I will use the MOA. I need to bring this somewhere. And if we do do the additional services, then I will not use the MOA. Does that make sense? Cause I don't want to waste it. No reason to waste it. It's 20 bucks a can and 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So basically we can think about this chemical cleaning system as something similar to this, but clearly we can see there's a volume difference. That's one can. Think of this as like a maintenance cleaner. And then think of this one as like a deep clean pressure washer. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to get into this and I'll show you what's going on. We've got a, two gallons of solution here and some more cans. That's the 44 K. That's the fuel system stuff. There's one gallon jug, another gallon jug, and then, yep, the can of MOA. So what we have here, 
these are the cleaners and the rinse solution. So we've got an entire gallon of engine cleaning solution, a similar compound to this, but much thicker and more concentrated. This will serve as the entire crankcase fill for one engine flush. So what we do is we drain all that engine oil out, fill that engine with this entire jug right here. It's six quarts, so maybe, well, it'll take five quarts, but the majority of these contents will be filled up in that engine. We run it up to about 2,500 RPM for an hour, run the daylights out of that thing, get a lot of heat into it, and that's when this chemical starts to become activated. Then we pull the filter, drain this out right here, then we refill with the rinse oil bottle. Again, this is six quarts, we only need five. We refill with this, run the daylights out of it again for 2,500 RPM. Pull the filter, drain all this out, then we can put a regular filter on it, refill it with regular engine oil, synthetic or synthetic blend, then we will install the motor oil additive and then install the 44K fuel system stuff into the fuel tank. That way the piston rings can be attacked from the top side and from the bottom side with a cleaner, a conditioner, and a cleaner. Make sense? So where we're at right now is we have seen an improvement. Uh, we're visually not seeing as much smoke that came out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and top this engine oil level off to its fullest. I'm gonna re, uh, revisit the customer and have a conversation about the additional services. Uh, I think what we're gonna wanna do is let this thing go for about a thousand miles and then check the oil consumption level at a thousand. If we're still losing oil, I'm gonna press uh, that other service a little bit harder. If we have burnt no oil at a thousand, then that's gonna let us know that uh, the, the original, the smaller cleaner, uh, the can of EPR has given us desirable results. And we basically just have to weigh, is it worth it or is it not? And, and I guess we'll go from there. So guys, uh, let me know what you think about this situation, these cleaning products, and the results you've seen so far in the comment section down below. Be nice about it, or I'll just ban you because I'm tired of people just meh, 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 meh for no reason. Behave yourself, be nice. We're here for discord. Uh, we're not here for hate. Hate in your heart will kill you. We've established that already. So no hate, behave yourselves, be nice, be respectful. Uh, weigh in your opinions in the comment section, and hopefully uh, we're gonna get the opportunity to perform a more extensive piston ring cleaning on this particular Hyundai engine. So you guys, uh, all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And again, let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. Do not forget to engage that like and subscribe button where down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a Hyundai for now, in a video, in a day, in a transmission.